Hi, Chrissy. Rhonda Constant, your favorite hometown medium, physical energy healer, and oracle card advisor. Um, I'm having problems with my computer again, so this is probably going to be some static and crackling and stuff. So hopefully it doesn't get any worse and you can still hear me. Because uh, I want to get these done. And I, you've been so patient. I, I can't thank you enough for being so patient through all my hiccups. But, before I have to take it back to the doctor for the third time since March, um, I just want to, so hopefully we get through this anyway. So thanks for being patient through all this crap my computers caused me. So this is for mom, and so I'd like to explain to my first timers. I'm a medium and I see, hear, feel, sense, know, um, get a little taste and smell. So I have all senses, pretty much. And this is not an exact science. It's, it's just, we can, just, the way we communicate is just what it is. So they talk to me, but they also show me pictures, and I call it spiritual charades. And I have to describe the picture to you. They don't always tell me all the information because they, so a lot of times, most of the time, they'll just give me enough so you know what they're talking about. I don't need to know. It's none of my business. I just need to get enough across so you know. I don't spend the whole reading validating everything that's happened in your life. That's just me patting themselves on the back and look what I can do. Um, it's about getting you messages. So when it, and when it comes to names, I stink at names. <laughs> I seriously have to quit saying that. But uh, if he refers to somebody, I usually don't get the exact name. So if he says, let's say he says John, it'll be a male with a J or a J-O name. So you might have to stretch it out of the box a little bit. Anyway, I like to explain that. So we're going to talk to Jerry today. And... Uh, He comes in and he's sitting, he's sitting outside and he's sitting on, okay, let's say, let's say you cut a tree down and you cut it and, and he's showing this stuff like about this big around. And let's say you cut a tree down and you set it upright, a, a big chunk of it, and he's sitting on top of one of those and he's got a knife and he's got a, a twig or some kind of he looks like some kind of like little branches or something. He's with, he's not exactly whittling, but he's just he's just shading. He's just shading. He's not making a design. He's just shaving the bark off of it. Just shaving it, shaving it, shaving it. Just kind of like a kind of like somebody would doodle. That's what I refer. That's what it feels like to me. Um, just something to do. And uh, he thinks, he thinks while he does this, is that it kind of quiets his mind. It gives him something to do with his hands so his wheels don't turn as fast. And he can kind of think, and I'm the same way. I need something to do. People complain about me you know, all the time. I'm always playing a game on my phone when I'm sitting with them. I need something for my hands to do, and that's what he's doing. things I've left her. <laughs> so he he seems to really like the outdoors. He says when you walk out of your house or just or you're just outside the door, I'm not sure if you're coming or going. You you thought you heard him. You thought you heard him call your name. Uh, nickname. Not, not your actual name, but a nickname. It was him. And when you thought you heard that, you said, I wish you were still here.
and you didn't like that it made you sad. So he may back off the that because he doesn't want to make you sad. He's hoping it'll make you happier now that you know that it's actually him. Now that you know he's actually still there. showing me a dog that looks, I would say it looks like a beagle. So, it may not be the exact dog, but it's something that looks similar to a big beagle. And usually I can tell, but I'm not absolutely sure, but it looks like this dog is with him now. Sometimes they refer to animals that are still here. And the dog's just laying there by his foot. Oh, he's a good old boy. So, somebody has this dog, and he wants them to know that he has this dog with him now. And the dog is safe and okay. I don't know if he's calling the dog a porcupine, or the dog had been into a porcupine, or somebody's got a nickname like porcupine. He mentions porcupine, but he's still showing me the dog. They don't always explain everything. Sometimes they just throw words out, and sometimes they just uh, they just give me enough that hopefully you will know. He's. Did he ever smoke what I would call a corn cob pipe? It it literally the pipe literally looks like a corn cob pipe. Well, duh. Um, you will smell that whatever whatever the smell was when he had this. You will smell this every so often, and you might be going through Walmart. You might be in your car. You might be standing outside, you might be standing in the kitchen, it doesn't matter where you're at. When you get that little wisp go by and you smell it, you thank him, you acknowledge him, say, I love you, I know that's you, and bring me more signs that you're still here with me. And once you recognize those, that those are signs that they're sending you, because I promise you, your loved ones are sending you signs. You just don't realize what they are at the time. And, it, and then it like opens the floodgates. I always tell people, it's like, ta-da! We got their attention. Now we can send more. And you'll get lots of things. He's in the kitchen. He's at the stove. There's something in a skillet. Let's see where it's going with this. They don't ever waste a message. There's always a reason. And if you don't remember it now, somebody else might be able to validate it for you, or you might remember it later, or it might happen in the next week. But he's taking a, a it's a big spoon. It's a big, like a big stirring spoon, like spoon. <laughs> a big stirring spoon, like you would stir in a big pot, only he's in the skillet with it. And he's picking it up and he's sipping out of it. He's sipping some the juice of something out of it. Let's see if he's gonna tell me or let me see what's in this skillet. Okay. 
He's showing me a chunk of meat and a carrot. But it's not in a roaster, it's in a skillet. So there, I, he seems to be. One of something that he really loved, one of his favorite dishes that had a chunk of meat and a carrot in it. And, pro, and I'm sure it had other things in it, but he's. Oh, there's a potato. But he's just showing me the whole carrot, the whole potato, so I see that those ingredients are in there, and uh, you will smell that too. So whatever that dish is, just like the smoke off the corn cob pipe, you'll smell, you'll smell that dish. It doesn't have to be by the stove, anywhere. Acknowledge him, tell him you love him, tell him you know that's a sign from him, and thank him. And asking to ask, you can ask him anything. He says you're a good old gal, and I love you dearly. You put up with a lot of my crap. You put up with a lot of my laziness. I wasn't the most energetic person. <laughs> I don't think I've ever heard one admit that. We had what we needed to get by, and life was good. We didn't need a palace to be happy. And look at the wonderful kids. He says, you should be proud. Then you should be very proud. You taught them that gold is not the most important thing in the world. And by gold, he's not referring to actual gold, but money and stuff and Showing me Okay. Here we go with the spiritual charades. He's showing me a road, but it's a mud road. It's a dirt road. I don't see a lick of gravel on it. It's got two ruts in it where you drive down it. Looks like it's between two fields, possibly cornfield or something. Not sure about the crop. And I won't make anything fit. And and the truck that is going down this mud road, and it looks muddy at the time, but it's got some deep ruts in the middle of it, is an old, old pickup. I'm going to say a 50-something. And I have one that looks similar. He says, he says yep, it was a stick shift. That's what I learned to drive a stick shift on, was that old truck. I can't tell if it's a Ford or Chevy or what, so evidently it doesn't matter. And it's, it's not like white or blue or red or something. It's like, it's like metal color. It's like dark gray, whatever, primer, something. Um, it could be black, but I don't think so. I know. You know, nowadays we have those rat rods, and we have several of them here in town, and they're just down to the basic, no color on them. So, I'm not, I'm not sure about the color on the truck. But he's going going down this road away from me. I don't know if that has any significance.
Anyway, now, he's, now instead of just going down the road, now he's making it look like a steep hill where he's going downhill. And it seems to be water at the bottom. Like a lake, and it looks bigger than a pond, but I'm not sure. There's trees. Let's see where he's going with this. He's, they've always got a reason. Did you guys used to park down there? Did you guys used to park in a spot like that? In a vehicle like that? going to go any further with it. Now he has, <laughs> he has a big floppy straw hat on and it's kind of decrepit and it's got a big brim on it. <laughs> he said it almost looks like a sissy hat but it's not a straw hat like a cowboy hat. It's just, it's just a big floppy straw hat. <laughs> now he's going back to we can be proud of the children we can be so proud of the children he wants to mention that again oh he's gonna even this is for you he wants to tell Christy that he comes up and goes on your head. Getting your... No, that hurt. He doesn't do it. I don't... It probably, I can't say never, but probably won't be as hard as I just did it to myself. But And kind of in that area, he's been coming up. Maybe that's why I'm getting a headache lately. He's been trying to get your attention, Christy. Christy says you're quite the character. Kind of a chip off the old block. Okay, so we're going to go back to Mom. Mom, Mom, Mom. He said you're going to be just fine. Um... He said things are smoothing out. He shows you with uh, one or two other females, and you've been out uh, cackling around town, or or going out to eat together, going to shopping, or something. He calls it. He says it's a bunch of hens, a bunch of hens cackling. <laughs> he must have liked food. He's showing me, oh, I don't know if I can describe this. He's showing me some kind of a dish, and it's, I don't feel like it's something that you cook. It's more like a salad, but not lettuce. But it's got kind of reddish, dark pinkish, something and looks like maybe little marshmallows in it and maybe here pineapple there's but there's something in there I don't know if it's strawberry or what the what the reddish color is he's showing me a big tub of cool whip so there's something about this that he really likes or you just made this or just eaten this He says sometimes when he walks through the house, and he does still do that, that when he walks by you, you think you smell him. You smell his, I'm not saying body odor, um, his, smell him. 
and you do. He's literally walking by you at that time. He says, you didn't think I'd leave you all totally on your own, do you? He wants you to be happy. He doesn't want you to sit around and mope. To sit around and dream what you think you could still have. He wants you to learn how to work with him now the way he is. And he will show you a few things. Um, they can show you things by um, putting people in your path that will be good for your next step in your life. Or, I don't know if you work, but they can put jobs in your path. Or, they can put really good friends in your path that will be really good for you to, for your next step. He says, you're ready for your next step. Life is good. Make the most of it. He said there's a few things of his you need to get rid of. Clean it out. Give it away. Okay, now he's showing me this stick again. The one that he was carving on or whittling or whatever you want to call it earlier. He's showing me this again. He's got it sitting straight up. Okay, for one of your signs to let... I, I always... Everybody knows about the feathers, the butterflies, the cardinals the coins. So I ask my guys, when I talk to them, come up with something different. Something a different sign. So he's come up with this thing he was whittling on and it's standing straight up. Now when you find it, it won't be standing straight up. I'm pretty, pretty sure. And it's kind of got a point on the end of it. He's kind of done that until there's a point on it, kind of like a pencil. You're going to be walking along and you're going to look down and all by itself, like on the sidewalk or could be inside a store, could be in your house, it can be on the kitchen counter, can be anywhere, in your car, you're going to find a stick that looks similar to that. That's definitely unusual. So that's just like the other signs. When you find it, tell him thank you and you know, bring me more. He wants you to save it. As a reminder that he's still there with you. Uh, he said something and it sounded like Caribbean, Caribbean. I can't quite hear what he's saying. And he's not, he's just saying the word. Caribbean. I don't know. I don't know if that'll ring a bell at all with you. He's talking about a hangnail. <laughs> Do you have a hangnail right now? Did you recently have one? Like I said, it's not for me to know. It's just for me to tell you, and hopefully you will know. Okay, he's showing me like the most gorgeous sunset. It's way off in the distance. There's either trees or a hill. Gosh, this would be like any sunset. But it's 
it's really black down here and the clouds up here are really black here I mean black black but this little strip through here is like the most vibrant gorgeous colors that you could imagine and I'm assuming the sun's going down <clears throat> could be coming up but I, I, I feel like it's going down don't know why he's showing this like I said, there's just a little strip in there that shows this gorgeous, out of all this black, this is gorgeous. So I don't know if you recently sat outside and watched a scene like this, and he's acknowledging it and telling you that he was there with you at that time, or if there's another reason for it, because he's not saying, I can't twist their arm. He said, he said something about the car. The car is an old beater. The car is an old beater. See if you can upgrade. It would be a good thing. Okay, he seems to like the living room. And he's showing me like I'm looking at the couch and you will actually see and usually these things don't happen when you're in the same room usually you come back and you find stuff so I don't know how this is gonna work but I'm looking at the couch and on one end of it it's like the cushion has an indentation in it like like he's sitting there like somebody's sitting there squishing it down he will be there at the time that you see that And it may it may not be he's not he's not saying I'm sure it may not be a big indentation but it will be different than what it normally is it'll at least be something and once again he's trying to tell you he's there so acknowledge it tell him thank you bring you more and I've noticed lately the ones that I talk to they're trying to do things that don't scare the bejeebies out of you <laughs> like knocking on the walls and walking through your house. Yes, he said he said the things that you have heard, you're not it's, your house is not haunted. It's not haunted. It's not demons. It's not spooks. It's just me. He says, I still care for you, and I'm going to take care of you. We'll figure this out. It's, he says it's not as hard as he thought it would be to do what he needs to do for people down here where he's at. If that made sense. <laughs> Did I say that right? <laughs> He said, all the decisions you made in the end, or you helped make in the end, were perfect. They were perfect. Arrangements, everything. You did good. He said, oh, he says, so Rhonda, just make sure the old gal knows I'm around to help her. And to bring, and to bring you peace. And then I get the feeling he just wants to lean back and just kind of veggie out, you know, and just, he says, peace, peaceful, peaceful, relax, peace, peace. Comfy. He 
Yeah, he says the kind of feeling when you lean back and you put your feet up and you just stretch out and you just don't move and it's just peaceful. He says he's going to bring you those feelings and they can. You can reject them, you can block them, you can not accept them, but they can bring them. So it's up to you to accept it. And sometimes when they bring a feeling like that in, like peace and love, and I have felt it like, like totally envelop me and it brings you to tears. It's so strong. It's so beautiful. It's so loving. So it, it's, it's almost overwhelming, but it's a good overwhelming. Now if I just stay. <laughs> He's good. Tell the old gal I love her. So he, he's going to leave and he's kind of just ambling off. He says, I'm sorry. I had to go. As he's walking away. But no, he turns around and says, but no, I will return. I have returned, if you want to call it that. Crazy, she can't help but so he's leaving. Anyway, thank you for the opportunity, opportunity to talk to your loved one. I hope this gave you a little bit of peace, a little bit of love, and a hug from heaven. Rhonda Constant, your favorite hometown medium physical energy healer and oracle card advisor. See you later. Thank you.